So a few days ago, we covered the Tiffany Henyard deposition. We have this law group that's coming for her neck. They're out to get her. They're trying to get her, man. And when I tell you, I mean, they don't even have to try that hard to get her because, first of all, she was very non-compliant during that interview. It was just like pulling teeth. But thankfully, we have Mr. Keith Freeman's part of the deposition. They go through his bankruptcy his role in the township, how he came about, you know, his background in school. But the main thing that stuck out to me was the reason as to why Keith Freeman came to the Henyard administration in the first place. So anyways, folks, grab the popcorn, grab the drinks, man. This is going to be a good one. We're getting the inside scoop of the right-hand man. You know what I'm saying? The person who's supposed to have your back. The person, you know, who's supposed to represent you. You know, that's supposed to be her, like, that's her right hand, right? Other than Lacey. We even see him give you some red flags about how he truly feels about her run as an administration. But anyways, let's go ahead and check this thing out. It's going to get good. All right. So jumping straight into this, they ask their little beginning questions. They basically tell them no nodding your head, give clear answers, speak up loud, you know, basically just the things that will make it easy for the record taker to take down. Then we go forward. They say, okay, basic question. I ask all deponents, have you ever filed for bankruptcy? You know, what's funny is I don't think they asked Henyard that question. So it's just funny how he starts off by saying, oh, I asked everybody this question. Do you? Okay. Anyways, um, have you filed for bankruptcy? He responds, yes. They, they come back and respond, okay, in what year? He responds, 2024. Okay. Oh, so just this year? He responds, 2024 and 20. I can't remember the year. Okay, so you filed twice? He responds, I have filed twice. Yes. All right. Have you ever been found guilty of any crimes or dishonesty such as retail theft, stealing, forgery, something that could affect your credibility? He responds, I plead the fifth. Now, I just think, you know, we're, we're going to keep reading this and we're going to get through it pretty easily. But I just think it's odd that you're going to plead the fifth for such a like, have you like, have you been convicted of those crimes? Yes or no? Why would you plead the fifth? It just gives me shady vibes, bro. Like, that's the most basic question. And I mean, even if you have, I think people would respect you more if you just admit to it. As long as you're not going to jail, I, you know, I know he's not going to go to jail if he answers anything like this. They continue to question them. Okay, when you say plead the fifth, you don't want to answer whether or not you have a conviction for crime of dishonesty? He responds, I don't want to answer the question, period. I don't know how that works. You would have to, and then his, his lawyer interrupts him. Okay, all right, well, we'll have to take that up on grounds of relevance. And the witness responds and says, yeah. So then they move forward, they ask another question. Okay, and he responds, okay. Also, as you sit here today, are you under the influence of any alcohol or drugs that may, he interjects. No, I interjected. You're right. I'm sorry. Then they continue. That may impair your ability to understand the question or give answers. He responds to them, no. Okay, you've been deposed previously. Approximately how many times have you been deposed? Maybe five or six. Maybe five or six. All right. Have you ever sued anyone or have been sued personally where you have been deposed? He responds, no. All right. So have all your depositions been related to your employment? He responds, yes. All right. And you are currently employed as the village administration for the village of Dalton, correct? He responds, yes. When were you hired? And not, I don't need the exact date, the day of the week, just, just ballpark, okay? month or season he responds january 2022 and you were brought in and appointed by mayor tiffany hinyard he responds i was appointed by mayor tiffany hinyard all right and did you receive the advice and consent of the village board when she made that decision he responds yes all right and was that done at the village board meeting he responds yes 
All right, do you have a contract with the village? He responds, no. All right, as a village administrator, that's a full-time job? He responds, yes. And can you tell me, do you report to anyone as a village administrator? He responds, I report to the mayor and the board of trustees. Okay, so do you work for the mayor and the board of trustees? That's a really funny, it's funny how they ask that question. Do you work for the mayor and the village of trustees? Because remember, they're treating these people like the low-level employee that shouldn't have to know anything. You know what I'm saying? They're treating them like this is a, you know, a Fortune 500 comp company, and they're the janitors. And shout out all the janitors out there, but, you know, need to know basis. You don't need to make decisions at the top of the building. We handle finances you janitors get paid. That's basically how they're treating the trustees. Our job is to make sure we take care of the business and not allow the business to handle us, which you just saw before you. It's a shame that every time it's time to really take care of things, such as making sure payroll is paid. Because guess what? They didn't vote on paying the police, the public works, making sure your concrete is down. They did not vote on none of that. But this is the things that I face as a mayor here in the village of Dalton. And it's sad because you're seeing it with your own two eyes. I can't make this up. Y'all see that people walk out at every single board meeting. You see when we had the other board meeting, they walked out when it was a $33 million um, issue on the table where we supposed to win a closed session. We would have made sure we was in a better predicament if they would have stayed and made sure they took care of the business. But okay, so do you work for the mayor and the board of trustees? He responds, yes. All right, shared equally or... And he responds, I don't know. Okay, do you mind, how much do you get paid per year? Approximately 99000 and some change, almost 100000 Then he continues, almost 100000 Listen, that's the, when I heard that, I was like, okay, but I feel like that's the amount of money the mayor should be making. Like, he should be making 100 and she should be making 150 The fact that she's making two hundred k, that's what's making her feel like a celebrity. She's, act, she's doing too much. You know, and I'm all for people getting paid hefty for the job that they do. It's a beautiful thing. You know, get that bag by all means. But when it really corrupts you to this level, it's crazy. And I would respect her if she had her makeup artists off of her off of her coins, you know, and she put up her her billboard signs off of her coins and she she did her whole police entourage, maybe a little private security detail that she spends 10 grand a month on. No, that's too much money. Uh, maybe a, a security detail that she spends like five grand a month on. I would respect all of that if she felt like she wants to be all that shit. If she did it off of her own money, bro. But no, you're going to use taxpayer money. So that's where it's really just like, bro, you're making all this money and you're still a piece of shit. You're still a piece of shit. Greedy piece of shit. But anyways, let's continue. So we skip ahead a bit to page 11 and they ask him. What high school did you attend? So they're going through his background. And what do you know? He responds, Thornridge High School. All right. And did you graduate from Thornridge High School? He responds, yes. They say, what year? He responds, a long time ago, man. 96, I think. Shit. I was born in 97. So that's hilarious. He says, 96, I think. Right around there. Yeah, somewhere around there. They, they ask him, and did you attend college or junior college? Yes, I attended three colleges. I attended Grambling State University, Mount Mercy College. He stops and then says Grambling State University and then University of Iowa and Mount Mercy College. I think he was trying to remember, so he kind of like stopped up. So Mount Mercy University, he went to University of Iowa and he attended Grambling State University. Three colleges. They ask him, okay, did you receive any degree or certificates from any of those universities or colleges? He responds, I received a certificate from Mount Mercury. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Mount Mercury College. They ask him, oh, and what was the certificate in? He responds, business. What year was that? He responds, between... I want to say either 2002 and 2004. It was after I got out of the Army. <laughs> so fun fact, Keith Freeman was in the Army. Crazy, right? And I mean, we're going to go, we're going to continue moving and we're going to start to realize that he has an extensive history 
in politics and working for himself, you know, finance. He has an extensive history, so he can't really play in a moron. He has history in um, IT, you know what I'm saying? Information technology, computers. So he can't really fake the moron because his track record shows him to be too intelligent for being a dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you almost get too smart to play dumb at a certain point. And that's why these depositions are so powerful. But let's continue. And you said it's a business certificate. Is it a degree in business or... And then he responds, no, no, they don't have... He stops. They don't have a business degree. They respond, okay, what does the certificate state? What does it stand for? He responds, I don't know how to describe it. It's a business certificate. They give you... If you apply for... It's a business certificate. Sort of like when you apply for... I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> they respond, how many classes did you attend to get that business certificate? A few, he responds. I don't know exactly how many. Two semesters, if that, if that helps. Oh, that helps. He responds, yes, yes. So two semesters full-time? He responds, part-time. I wasn't, I wasn't eligible to go full-time. They respond, all right. And where was the school at? Okay, so, you know, they're just getting his background. I do find it interesting that he and Henyard went to the same high school. Maybe they did just kind of grow up in the same neighborhood. I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying, like, a theory where, like, they knew each other growing up and it was, like, a conspiracy to get those two together. But I just find it interesting that they did attend the same high school. They might have the same friends or know the same people. They know of each other you know, you go to the same high school with someone, even if they were a bit ahead of you, or even if they had graduated a bit further ahead of you, you typically know of the people. So that kind of, that kind of proves a bit of, you know, familiarity between the two. But let's continue. So we move on to page 18. And we go kind of into Freeman's history as just a politician, basically. So they ask him, Prior to working as a village, village administrator for the village of Dalton, you worked for the village of Robbins, correct? That is correct. And you were the village administrator for the village of Robbins, correct? He responds, correct. For how many years? He responds, three. All right. And prior to the village of Robbins, did you work for any municipality or township as an administrator? He responds, yes. Okay. Where did you work? He responds, the village of Phoenix. And what was your position at the Village of Phoenix? He responds, the village administrator. All right, and how many years did you work there? He responds, I worked at the Village of Phoenix for seven years. All right, and was that full-time village administrator? He responds, village administrator position is part-time. Yeah, so basically, <clears throat> he goes on to explain he worked there. He was under IT. So he was a village administrator for two locations. Then he worked IT for Phoenix. And then he pretty much goes on in the, in the deposition to explain how he was an entrepreneur before that. He had his own business and, you know, he was doing his own thing. So this really proves a solid background in finance. If I don't know shit, if you can't see it, then I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? And just the fact that he filed for bankruptcy twice, there's familiarity in even filing bankruptcy. Maybe this time around, he was like, oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get I'm better at it. I'm going to get I'm going to get creative with this shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I think he messed up, because, you know what they say, the strongest swimmers are the ones that tend to drown. Right. Because they have that confidence. So he might have felt like he was a strong swimmer, you know, and, and wanted to try a few tricks and a few hoops in the water and shit and end up drowning. That's what it's sounding like to me. But let's continue. Now we, now we ask him the juicy shit. How did you come about knowing that the position would be open and discussion about that? He responds, I got a call from Roger Agpawa. I hope I said that name right. You guys <laughs> correct me in the comments. They respond, okay, who is Roger? He is the mayor of Markham. Okay, so did the mayor of Markham call you prior to the phone call with Bert Alderson? He responds, yes. Okay, and what did the mayor of Markham tell you or state to you? 
He stated that there was some turmoil in Dalton that I would be a good fit to help them figure out how to remedy some of the turmoil that he and I share the relationship with Bert, who was assessing helping to figure out how the turmoil can be rectified and that the mayor Henyard needed some guidance and that the board of trustees needed some assistance with helping trying to mediate whatever they needed, whatever they needed to mediate to help resolve the challenges that they had there. And that given my expertise, sorry, given my experience and what he knew about me, he felt I would be a good fit for that particular position. So what happened? People were seeing this from the outside for a long time. And so they really thought Freeman was the savior. You know, they, they thought Freeman came in here and he was about to be the guy who was like, listen, mayor, don't do that. We're going to do it this way. This is the mayor. This is how we should do it. Trust me. They thought he was going to be Mr. Act Right. Listen, that boy got in there. He, he got a few uh, amenities. You know what I'm saying? He got a few escort rides and he was like, oh, I like this. I like this shit. Shit. I ain't going to say nothing. I like this shit. Can you help me with my bank taxes? Can you help me with my bankruptcy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get one of those lawyers. Get one of them fire lawyers for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's use the tax dollars for that. You know, that. <laughs> but anyway, so the question continues. So the mayor of Markham reached out to you because he was aware of the turmoil between Mayor Hinyard and the Board of Trustees in the village of Dalton and that there would have been a fall off in 2021. He responds, that is correct. All right. And how long was the conversation for? He responds, two hours. You spoke with the mayor of Markham for two hours about the turmoil in the village of Dalton. He responds, yes. Crazy, man. And it's kind of funny how he's just willing to say like, yeah, you know, they called me because this shit was chaotic. Like, just point blank. No shame in it. I mean, like, how can you lie, right? Henyard, I think, is the only one who's delusional enough to say that that her camp is not in disarray. She's the only one who's going to be like, no, we're doing all the work. We're doing all the stuff for the community. Everything's fine. She is the only one. Her right-hand man is saying, yeah, I got called to help the shitty mayor in Dalton because of my expertise, my experience. Crazy. Now they ask him a key question. They say, and at that time of the conversation, do you know whether or not our office had been appointed as legislative counsel? He responds, no, I don't know that. Okay, have you since learned that around that time, that conversation, that my office had been appointed as legislative counsel by the board of trustees? All right. And the different names, there's strong mayor form of government, aldermanic, village manager, trustee form, to name a few. He responds, mm hmm, mm hmm. Are you familiar with those terms? He responds, yes. <laughs> well, I'm not. In the village of Phoenix, what was the form of government? He responds, strong mayor. All right. In the village of Robbins, what was the form of government? He responds, strong mayor. In the village of Dalton, what is the form of government? <laughs> he responds, chaos. That's crazy. So the fact that he's going so hard, bro. He called her shit chaos. And this is, remember, this is the right-hand man speaking. I, I didn't think the right-hand man was supposed to speak like this. Straight up, he was like, that's not even a form of government. But he's like, yeah, our form of government is chaos. You know, it's not, it's, it's not looking good, bruv. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's looking pretty bad, you know? But I just found that funny. That was like the main thing of that whole section is that they were asking him about forms of government. And it's like, what is Dalton under? He was like, man, this shit is chaos. This shit is no bueno. Anyways, continuing on. All right. And then the mayor issues a veto on an action by the board of trustees. The board can then override the veto at the next board meeting, correct? He responds, next regular meeting from my understanding. They say yes. He says yes. Okay, and that's the checks and balances of municipal government, is it not? He responds yes. Okay, and if a board overrides a veto, is there a, another action the mayor can take if they disagree with the override of the veto? Then they go on to ask, well, in your experience as village administrator in three different municipalities, have 
you ever run into the scenario where the mayor has attempted to take action contrary to the override of that mayor's veto? He responds, no. They say, right? He responds, no. I've never had, never been in a municipality where a veto needed to take place. So he's saying the veto never, there was never a veto that took place in general. She's the first one to even be rocking this in her municipality. Then they ask the question, so while you're in Phoenix, there was never a veto? He says no. And in Robbins, there was never a veto? He says no. All right, in Dalton, how many vetoes have there been? He responds, a lot. All right, and those, and those vetoes from Mayor Henyard, when you say a lot, have they all been presented in a written form? He says, I don't know. Okay, do you get a copy of the mayor's vetoes? I'm sure I do. Okay. Are, do you read them? And then he responds, most of the time. <laughs> Yo, you know the one thing I'll say about Keith, though? He's not, he, he's not playing no, like, he's not sugarcoating this shit. He's like, listen, bro, she passes on so many vetoes that I, don't, I can't even keep track with it. She just, the, the second she disagree with somebody, she just about to veto that shit. She feels like she's the all-seeing power. And I know he's tired of this shit. But one thing I'll say is I think it's too late. I think he got his claws into too much and he's starting to realize, I think his brain, his noggin is working at a higher capacity than Tiffany Hinyard. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he's processing shit a little bit faster than, than Tiffany. So I think he's realizing like, I need to make a turn. I need to start to distance myself. I need to look like the concerned patron that's looking on like, oh, my God, this is so wrong, Tiff. He's trying to you can tell that narrative is trying to shift in that direction to keep his ass out of trouble. Again, he already has his bankruptcy issues he's dealing with. On top of that, he doesn't need to go to jail for something Tiffany's been doing. So uh, he's on it. He's like, listen, if I go down, you either come in with me or I'm getting freed somehow, some sort of immunity. All right. And so we move forward and we get into the deeper matter at hand. They ask them about invoices, who handles the invoices, who signs them, who actually is the one to pass things out to, to pay people. Right. Because this is what we're here for. We want our money for the time that we represented the trustees. Right. So they go through a few pages of just understanding how the village works and you'll find the common thread shout out my patreon i posted them up there or you could email me and ask for the transcript i could just send it to you um but if you're if you're a patron already just go on patreon but if you just want it for free just email me i'll hopefully be able to send it to you if i see it but you'll read mostly henyard and um and freeman they they distance themselves from the bills. They'll always say, well, that's administration. That's um, that's finance. Finance does that. We don't we don't know. We don't we don't do those things. So let's go ahead and see what he's ha he has to say about invoices and finances and actually paying these these poor people. They've been just at, they've been begging for they, they little money for the longest, bro. It's crazy. So they ask him the question, March, April, May, in that time period, there was a discussion and voting by the board to pass an ordinance to put a referendum question up to recall Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Does that sound right? Yes, I remember that. And I mean, I just looked it up. What does it mean to recall a mayor? That means step your ass down. They were trying to get her the fuck up out of here. They're trying to, you know, Kobe her the fuck out of here, toss her the fuck out. So, so there was an ordinance and they were hired to do it. He says, yes, I remember that. And then they ask, and based on your memory of our invoices and submission of our invoices, our invoices stopped being paid from the time that the referendum ordinance issue came out through today's date. Would you agree with that? I would have to check, he responds. You know, I don't know. I, I would have to check with, I have to, I have to, go, I have to go check with finance. I, I, I don't know. They respond, okay. When was the last time we were paid from the village of Dalton, if you know? He responds, I don't know. Okay, if I could represent to you that the last payment we received was January 2022, shortly before the referendum question was brought up, would you have any reason to disagree with that? 
He responds, no. You know, <laughs> all you could say is you don't know. You forgot. <laughs> the amnesia's kicking. It's kicking my ass today. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember, you know. But the proof is in the pudding. This deposition is a slam dunk. I mean, you got Freeman going against Henyard. You got Henyard throwing everybody under the bus. It's looking bad. So they ask him, all right, as village administrator, would you be able to authorize the issuance of a village check for items that have been approved? They stop. That have been approved by the corporate authorities? He responds, I don't understand what that means. They rephrase. As village administrator, do you think you have the authority to tell the finance team that, hey, this matter was approved by the corporate authority for payment, send a check, or wire the funds over to this vendor? Do you think you have that authority? He says no. And okay, so as village administrator, do you have the authority to stop those same type of payments that have been approved by the corporate authorities and tell the finance team, don't prepare the check, don't wire it? And he responds, no. But what was their very next question? They say, okay, who has the authority? He responds, the finance team. Okay, so, and then he stops them. And whoever are in the signatures of accounts, are you, and then they stop, strike that. Who are the signatures of checking accounts currently? He responds, the mayor and the clerk. Okay. Then he responds again, the mayor and the clerk comptroller from my understanding. So what is he doing? He's, he's pushing blame. He's nudging blame over to Henyard. Well, I mean, it's Henyard and the clerk. They're the ones that pay him, you know. And then what does Henyard say? Well, it's the finance team. They didn't really, I mean, it's not in the budget. You know, we can't pay him that. It's, uh, man, listen, these people are professional crooks, con men, con men and women. It's a crazy place out here. The, the soap opera continues, folks. I appreciate you guys for stopping in, man. We're going to have some more fire dropping later on today, possibly. So keep your eyes open for that as well. But um, this deposition <laughs> was really telling that, you know, if you surround yourself, you know, you surround yourself with snakes, you know, the other snake might eat you. You know what I'm saying? Snakes eat snakes, if you didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So, like... <laughs> Be careful. It's better to build an honest team than have a team of thieves and snakes because you might end up getting stabbed in the back. But anyways, folks, I love you guys, man. I'm going to see you in the next video. You know the vibe. Stay inside. Stay safe. Or if you're outside, stay dangerous. You know what I'm saying? But I'll see you in the next one. I'm out of here.